Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be proving that 0 divided by 0 is actually equal to 2. Now make sure to stick us the end of the problem where I have three bonus problems that are similar to this one, which you guys can try to solve. Alright, so we have 0 over 0 is equal to 2. So, for my proof, I'm going to first start with 0 over 0. So 0 over 0, well, 0 is the same thing as 1 minus 1. So now I'm going to have 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1. Now, this is the same thing as 10 minus 10. Anything minus itself is going to equal 0. So this is the same thing as 10 minus 10 over 10 minus 10. And now this is the same thing as 100 minus 100 over 100 minus 100. So anything minus self is equal to 0. So now 100 minus 100 over 100 minus 100. Well, 100, this is equal to 10 squared. So now, for my numerator here, I'm going to um, switch 100 as 10 squared. So now I have 10 squared minus 10 squared. However, for my denominator, this is going to be different. 100 is also the same thing as 10 times 10. Well, 10 times 10 is the same thing as 10 squared. However, I'm not going to write 10 squared. I'm just going to write 10 times 10 for my denominator. So now I have 10 times 10 minus 10 times 10. Now, if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is 10, and so is b. b is 10 as well. So this is going to equal 10 plus 10 times 10 minus 10. Now I have this over 10 times 10 minus 10 times 10. And now from here, I can actually factor out 10 from this. So if I factor out uh, 10 from 10 times 10 minus 10 times 10, I get 10 times, well, 10 times 10 divided by 10 is simply 10 minus 10 times 10 divided by 10 is 10 as well. So my numerator is still 10 plus 10 over 10 minus 10. Now, as you can see, I have 10 minus 10 in my numerator and as well as my denominator. So these two can simply cancel out. So now I'm left with 10 plus 10 over 10. Now 10 plus 10 is 20. So now I have 20 over 10, which is simply equal to 2. So now I have just proved that 0 over 0 is equal to 2. So now I'm going to give you guys three seconds to go ahead and go back to the video. Or sorry, I'm going to let you guys pause the video and look back and find out where I have made my mistake. Alright, so if you guys are wondering where the mistake was made, it was actually right here when I cancelled out both 10 minus 10s. 10 minus 10 is actually equal to 0. So this means that I have 10 plus 10 times 0 over 10 times 0. And you can't actually divide 0 by 0 because 0 divided by 0 is actually undefined. So I can't cancel these two out because if I did, it would just be undefined. So that's actually where I made my mistake. You can't divide 0 with 0. All right, so I have 8 to the power of 6 times 5 to the power of 5. So for my solution, 8 to the power of 6, we can rewrite as 8 to the power of 5 plus 1, because 6 is the same thing as 5 plus 1. So now I have 8 to the power of 5 plus 1 times 5 to the power of 5. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m 
times a to the power of n. So a to the power of 5 plus 1 is going to equal a to the power of 5 times a to the power of 1. Now this times 5 to the power of 5. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m times b to the power of m, this is the same thing as a times b to the power of m. So in this case, I have a to the power of 5 times 5 to the power of 5. And because these two have the same exponents, I can multiply these two. So this is going to equal 8 times 5 to the power of 5 times 8 to the power of 1. And now 8 times 5, this is 40. So now I have 40 to the power of 5 times 8 to the power of 1. And now, 40 to the power of 5, well, 40, this is the same thing as 4 times 10. So now I have 4 times 10 to the power of 5 times 8. And now if I have something in the form a times b to the power of m, same thing as a to the power of m times b to the power of m. So in this case, 4 times 10 to the power of 5, this is going to equal 4 to the power of 5 times 10 to the power of 5, now this times 8. Now 4, this is the same thing as 2 squared. So if I replace 2 squared with 4, I get 2 squared to the power of 5 times 10 to the power of 5 times 8. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 5, that's going to equal 2 to the power of 10, because 2 times 5 is 10. Now I have this times 10 to the power of 5 times 8. So now, 8 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3. So now I have 2 to the power of 10 times 2 to the power of 3 times 10 to the power of 5. Now if I have something to form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So 2 to the power of 10 times 2 to the power of 3, that's going to equal 2 to the power of 10 plus 3, which is 13. So now I have 2 to the power of 13 times 2 to the power of 5. And 2 to the power of 13 this is equal to 8,192, and 10 to the power of 5, this is going to equal 1 with 5 zero. so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now if I multiply these two, 8, 1, 9, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So this is my answer. Alright, so in this video, I'm going to be solving the problem 2 to the power of 101 minus 2 to the power of 100. So to solve this problem, I'm going to first start by rewriting 2 to the power of 101 as 2 to the power of 100 plus 1. Now, the reason I did that is because now I can use this property that states that if I have something from a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So 2 to the power of 100 plus 1 is going to equal 2 to the power of 100 times 2 to the power of 1. And now I have this minus 2 to the power of 100. Now from here, I can factor out 2 to the power of 100. So I get 2 to the power of 100 times 2 to the power of 1 minus 1. Now 2 to the power of 1 is equal to 2, and 2 minus 1 is 1. So I'm left with 2 to the power of 100 times 1, which is equal to 2 to the power of 100. Now, there is actually another method of solving this problem. So going back to the problem, 
I have 2 to the power of 101 minus 2 to the power of 100. Now, before, I rewrote 101 as 100 plus 1, but how about I rewrite 100 as 101 minus 1? So now I get 2 to the power of 101 minus 2 to the power of 101 minus 1. And this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 101 minus 2 to the power of 100 and 1 plus negative 1. Now, if I use that property again, that states that a to the power of m plus n is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n, I get 2 to the power of 101 minus 2 to the power of 101 times 2 to the power of negative 1. And now if I factor out 2 to the power of 101, I get 2 to the power of 101 times 1 minus 2 to the power of negative 1, which is equal to 2 to the power of 101 times 1 half, which is equal to 2 to the power of 101 times 2 to the power of negative 1, which is equal to 2 to the power of 100. So that's the second method of solving this problem.